with Dan Cook, which I don't see it in uh, many out of print. <laughs> <laughs> Who, the West? They got it from the Arabs. <laughs> <laughs> they took all the courtesy, Arabs left with nothing. <laughs> In the West, they have finishing schools, right? How we say what finishing uh, finishing schools are uh, schools for very high class people. Okay, they go to very good schools, very top elite schools, and then they have they go for this school finishing school to finish you, where they learn how to be high class people, how to uh, drink high class, you know, how to sit high class, how to do everything. Where are they taking that from? They're taking that from the manners of the Holy Prophet They are learning. I'm sure I've had mentioned that a few times. How the West uh, develop their manners? I mean, let's break it down a little bit more. Mm. Which West? Let's say England, British people. They're very polite, right? Everything they say, oh, I'm sorry. Everything, I'm sorry. Man is walking the street, he bump into a flag post, he says, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> He'll pardon me. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm not really impressed with their manners because these are the same people that they commit cruelty and atrocity for generations all around the world. <laughs> they learn from here and there. And when the life is good, it's easier to pick up these manners. But you're not really being tested with it. You know the first English, first English, let's say the most popular English translator of the Quran Kirim, Muhammad Pektal, his name. He said, when the West leaves Christianity, they become very humane, humans. When they leave Christianity, they have some intelligence, they start looking everyone as humans, they stop judging them, they stop being cruel, everything. It says when the Muslims leave Islam, they become more barbaric. They become more jahil. And no one, <laughs> let's say this, this is second Jahiliya. Let me rephrase it like that. This is second Jahiliya. Second Jahiliya is mirroring the first Jahiliya in so many ways and even worse. In the first Jahiliya, who are the most Jahil nation on the face of the earth? Thank you. The second Jahiliya, so many things are mirroring it. Why is that also? They love the way of the Holy Prophet and people are proud of their nationalistic past. They are not proud of their Prophet. Look at the heartland of Islam, the Hijaz. For over 1,000 years, 1,300 years, Islam has been built, 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 built. The Hijaz I'd say in the 1800s, huh? it was the most sophisticated Muslim land. 
They were very sophisticated, they were very urbane. They were very mannered. Every Thursday night, there was zikr that was happening in the Haram al-Sharif. You have different circles of tariqat people making zikr. This one start, this one finishes, this one will start, finishes, this one will start. Continuously, every Friday, every Thursday, right, continuing. And that's what especially the Ottomans put for hundreds of years. Islam is just 1400 years. For 700 years, the Turks, they were ruling half. Mm. They were putting things carefully. They were not Arabs, but they loved the Prophet They were putting the manners of the Prophet there. This was a Hijaz. Now what happened to the Hijaz? A group of people came and they say, this is not Islam that you are practicing. These Turks, they're not Muslims. You have lost Islam. They slaughtered everything. They destroyed over 1,000 years of civilization that was their Islamic civilization. They want to start, restart everything back to year zero when it was just dust and desert. And these were people with hardness in their hearts that they were slaughtering Muslims inside the Rawza Sharif. Hmm? And this was in the name of Arab nationalism. Who were they supported by? They were supported by the British. And that Arab nationalism it spread throughout all of the Arab lands. And they say, we have to have our own destiny that is different from the destiny of the rest of the world. <coughs> now once you take out the love of the Prophet wasalam, and over 1,000 years of slow building of that, and you destroy over 1,000 years. You destroy the madrasas, you destroy the system, you destroy the alim, the ulama, the teachers. You destroy everything and you bring up new teachers. Are they concentrating on adab? No, because adab comes with what? What teaches adab? Huh? No. What teaches? Fiqh teaches you adab? Tariqat teaches you adab. People of the tariqat, they teach, they teach you the highest form of adab. This is what dervish is. The one who is on the divine threshold, entering into the divine courtyard. And in the divine courtyard, you must have your manners. It is not knowledge that you're right. You're running after, it is manners. But with manners, knowledge comes, secret comes, everything comes. And you cannot learn manners through books. So, once that is all destroyed, then they teach you this version of Islam that it says, we are pure, you are not. Teaching you the version of Islam saying, all of you are kafirs. We are the only ones who are Muslim. We have the right to kill you, to kill your wives, to take them as aljarias, to kill your children, to confiscate all your property. It is fatwas written, books, volumes written by these ones who control these lands right now. And this is the influence that they push. I have never seen a Wahhabi who is humble, who is saying, brother, you are right, I am wrong. Never. Sometimes they try to, they are fake, I push another button and they explode. And this is the influence that they're pushing everywhere for over a hundred years. And Muslims everywhere, not only in the Arab lands, Muslims everywhere, they think that this is it. <sighs> so this is what you're going to get. They lost it. <coughs> we lost it because we left the teachings of the Holy Prophet. The West, how did they gain that? Life became very easy. It's easier to share when you're actually not hungry. And 
they start to move away from being so heavily influenced. They start to move away from their religion and they start to think and understand and experience and observe a little bit more. But uh, at the same time, you are not going to find people who have more manners than Muslims, especially poor Muslims especially poor humble Muslims that they're holding on strongly to tariqat in real Ahli Sunnah way. The poor Muslims who say, I cannot steal this, Allah is watching. Muslims who have faith. Now, what is the manners of those who don't have faith compared to the manners of some who have faith? So many ways we say the um, Americans, they have good manners, no? Yeah, they're polite. They're not rough like this, but scratch a little bit deeper. Not going to find too much that is there. Maybe it used to be. We have these conversations now. I sp spoke to Aslan. Where's Aslan? So many times. Say Americans like this. He says, but this is not my experience. 40 years ago, this happened. I said, yeah, that was 40 years ago. Now we have MAGA. Now you have Trump. And even those ones that it doesn't make sense for them to be foolish and cruel and this, they say, but I'm with him. They're leaning back against the ideology and politics. There's nothing beneath the surface. But those who are not leaning against that and they're still using their intelligence, uh, more faith comes to them, more life comes to them also. We say so many times, yes, this is a country where we can sit and we can make zikr. This is a country where if you're proud of what you believe in, other people will give you respect. If you're not proud of what you believe in, they're not going to give you respect. I understand that. This is the genius of this country and this is something, this is a privilege. This is not a right. It's like that because the laws of this country and the people are upholding those laws. If they don't uphold those laws, if they change those laws, that even now there are so many who want to change those laws. This is not, this will be taken away from us. This is not a right, this is a privilege. The rest of the country, the rest of this world does not have this because this privilege is not given to them. Privilege is only given to people who have power. Hmm? Correct or no? I think so. We want something that is sincere and something that is honest, inshallah. Mm. That beyond courtesy and beyond politeness is actually a willingness to share, a willingness to help, a willingness to put yourself in difficulty in order to make that other person's uh, pain to be lifted a little bit. This you don't really find too much in the West. To put yourself out. When they have something, they say it's fine. But when they really have to put yourself in a bit of pain, they're a little bit more hesitant to do it. Muslims like this or like that, let's say the Arabs, might be a bit rough. But, especially when it comes to family, if they have to help, they're more honest. Mm. They're more forthcoming. Inshallah. Allah make us the generous ones. Mm.